Let's watch some Greg and Tim show clips. Tim. Yes, Greg. On Friday, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, Friday. Friday, TGIF. TGIF Fridays. Friday, I woke up knowing, not knowing, like basically thinking that Shohei's going to make his decision when I woke up on Friday. Yep. That was my thought. Shohei's making his decision today. He did not. But I really, really think, and you might not think the same way as me. Yeah. And I honestly think that JP Morosi and the Toronto Blue Jays were absolutely used in that event. To drive the price up to a player who was ultimately always going to sign with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. So we're talking about Shohei Otani. Yeah. It was Otani watch all day on Friday. I posted our video from our podcast on Friday about Otani and how he would be the best fit for the Blue Jays. Yeah. Posting that literally 12 minutes later. No, sorry. I posted that on Saturday after the whole Otani watch happened on Friday and he didn't sign with the Jays. On Saturday, I posted the, why the, why the Jays should have Otani, why he should sign with the Jays. Yeah. 12 minutes after I posted that, I had to make a new post. <laughs> <laughs> Anger. Angst. The post was the fact that he signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers for a record-breaking 10-year, $700 million contract, which, good for him. Good for him. I'm absolutely happy that he got paid. Sort of. No, I really don't mind him getting paid. No, he I'm, sort of got paid. Yeah, we'll get to that we'll in a second. That second. <laughs> but I'm glad the Jays didn't pay $700 million. I was good with 600 I was good with the six hundred million that the rumor was. So the reports were that the Jays' offer was around the same amount as the Los Angeles Dodgers was. Roughly, yeah. So my question is this: If the Los Angeles Dodgers or Shohei's camp, his whatever his agent, used the Toronto Blue Jays to drive the cost up, it would have, I would think, be kind of back and forth thing. What's your bid? What's your bid? Go and yeah. bumping up the bid. So my question is, when they hit the magic number that Shohei's like, I want to get $700 million, and the Los Angeles Dodgers uh, gave him that money, Mm -hmm. again, sort of, and we'll get into that, Um, do you think their camp went back to the Blue Jays and said, okay, no? No. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why stop? Why not? Why stop the bidding there? Because he wanted to play for the Dodgers. I think the Jays had a max yeah. bid. So this is what I think really happened. And it's a conspiracy theory and people can say that it's wrong, whatever they want to say. Yeah. This is what I think happened. CAA, the management team for Shohei Otani, contacted JP Morosi, one person inside, not like main people or anything like that. Somebody inside contacted JP Morosi and said, Shohei's getting on a plane to Toronto. Yep. That's all they said. And remember, that wasn't the only rumor, right? And then the plane, there was a plane going from Anaheim to Toronto that was a private plane. Now, here's the thing with that private plane Shohei Otani owns a private plane. Right. The private plane matched the exact model of the one going from Anaheim to Toronto. Yeah. Now, let me break it down even further for you. On that private plane was not Shohei Otani. It was Robert Herkjavec, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, from <laughs> Shark Tales. Shark Den? Shark Tank. Sharks, a shark. Robert Herkjavec, did you know this, is a CAA client. A client of the same representation as Shohei Otani. So now you have a leak coming from somewhere to a very reputable MLB reporter, John Morosi, who would not have sent anything out without having a proper source. So let's assume that's correct for the purposes of what? 
to get LA back to the table for one last pitch. Right. Because by the middle of the day, when Herkjavec landed and the helicopters in Toronto were circling the plane to see if it was Otani and it wasn't, very eerily similar to Kawhi Leonard when he showed up in Toronto. They did the same thing, but this time it was not Shohei right. that got off the plane. So when that happens, also during the day when this was all happening, when this plane's in the air for those hours, the LA Dodgers and now one of the announcers or one of the, the Dodger Nation is an yeah, online service with, with yeah, the Dodgers yeah. basically conceded yeah. that Otani was not signing with the Dodgers. And then no, not just that, they were actually reporting that he was going to sign with the Blue Jays. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't just, they were he, also he told not, they were also told that he was signing with the Blue Jays. Right. So there is some kind of source yeah. that has been feeding this information to these people. And then it took, uh, one of the last, one of the other reporters after, uh, the plane landed, the reporter came out for the MLB, said, no, Otani's not on the plane. He's not in Toronto. He's still at his home in Anaheim. I've confirmed this. Yeah. And I believe at that moment, LA said, we have our last chance to get him. Right. And they utilized that to get more money out of him. I would suspect that a lot of what you say could very well be true. This is just my thoughts. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a lot of oddities in the entire story. It's very weird. Yeah. And you know what else gets weird? And and going back to the point where, so you are happy that the Toronto Blue Jays did not spend that money. Is that yeah, what you're saying? I am now, yeah. You were very much up in, up in the moon and the stars about getting Shohei. So I am, I am a Shohei fan. I'll watch him in LA. I got my Dodgers hat on because, yeah. you know. Well, we're going to book a trip later on, right? Right. Yeah. But <laughs> the $700 million would have taken away from any other players that they could have signed. Right. Unless the Jays somehow figure out a way to structure the contract where it only costs them $2 million a year to have Shohei. So the contract is for those people who don't, uh, aren't following the story, he $70 million a year, but for the first 10 years of the contract, it actually works out to only $2 million. That's what he's getting paid. And all the, the $68 million that's left uh, per year is going to be deferred from 2033 to 2043 when the luxury tax, well, who knows where that's going to be, Yeah, uh, where inflation is going to be, who knows where that's going to be. And now today there was a weird out clause that said if the owner or the president of baseball operations um, steps down out yep. of that position, he can, he can leave. He could leave LA. So it's a very, very, very weird situation. Now, here's the other thing too. For all those people in Major League Baseball, Yankee fans, Dodger fans, Mets fans who think that money doesn't matter and they can throw it, it's all, you can make, you can throw as much money as you want, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, there's, obviously it does if the Dodgers are trying to play these games in order to get other players. It yeah. obviously does matter. So it allows them to buy more players at a, like, and lower their luxury tax. Yeah. So I believe that it only lowers it though. Um, you could, I don't know for sure, but I think that it's only like 34 or 43. There's a, there's a weird number I heard that it actually like, it still goes against their payroll. Right. So they're not out the whole 70 million per year, but they are significantly less where they can sign somebody else for another 25 million and still be at the same amount. Yeah. So... The other thing too is, um, people are wondering if this contract's even going to be legal after the next CBA. Well, like it's going to be, yeah. but if they're going to be able to do another contract like this. Right. It's, it seems very questionable yeah. that you should be able to defer that much salary. I can see them making changes. Yes. So apparently this is the selling point to them is that Shohei will make above and beyond that 600 or the 680, 680 million dollars in endorsements and in other sponsorships and stuff like that in LA. Yeah, like in California, 
is a great situation where he's <laughs> never been before to make endorsements. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He just drove down the street. My my bad. <laughs> it's the Dodgers, though. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> what do you think is going to sell more? A Dodgers Otani jersey? Which, by the way, broke the record today. Yeah. What? The most, most jerseys sold. It's the honeymoon stage. There's going to be a ton of sales at the beginning. 100% there is. He yeah. beat Messi today. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's big money. And you last week were saying, like, who benefits from this? The Dodgers do. Yeah. 100%. For sure at the beginning, yeah. And, and again, Otani will benefit from all these sponsorships. Yeah. Money flows and it all works out for everybody. Yeah. Except you know, for Jays fans. Except for the Jays fans right now. I, I think, that as I told you last week, Shohei Otani is a investment. Yeah. And the Dodgers are smart to invest in But him. you're still happy we didn't get him for that money. Uh, I, I just think it would have hurt the Jays more than it would have helped them at 700. Yeah. Last week I was talking 500. Just Two, gotta, that's 200 million. Just got to structure it $1 a year for 700 million years. Yeah. <laughs> I guess <laughs> he's, he's going to be in a phenomenal player in that yeah. team. And I think that, uh, he's going to draw a ton of fans and I'm looking forward to seeing his first, uh, appearance in Toronto. Yeah. The Dodgers come to Toronto this year. Can you imagine after 10 years, he retires, let's say he retires after seven and moves to somewhere where the tax rate is like nowhere. He's That's buy, the thing. He buys moves a private Florida. island or for Florida. Yep. And, uh, he just takes all his money. Yeah. Why not? Why not? I think all of us would do that if yeah. we had the chance. And he's going to have to live on uh, ramen noodles for 10 years with only $2 million a year. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to do that. I don't know how. Ramen? Yeah, ramen noodles. That's what it's called. Mr. Noodles is technically ramen noodles. You don't think he'll have, like, KD? <laughs> Katie's crap. <laughs> crap dinner? Katie's crap dinner. Crappy dinner. Roman. My dad used to call it crappy dinner. <laughs> yeah. You want some crappy dinner? I'm like, it's like sure. I thought I, I had it every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for watching the uh, Greg and Tim show clips. If you'd like, you can click this guy right in the middle here. That's the button that you can subscribe with. Click, click. Or if you want to watch another video of ours, just press the button in front of me. Press the one in front of me. There's also one in front of Tim right there. Press it. Yeah. Press the button. button there, button there, and subscribe here. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.